Eddie Murphy's royal new role on Entertainment Tonight. The following is based on an actual court case. Do you recognize this? It's the stocking up bull from Les's head. Did an old acquaintance break into her home and attempt rape? Wasn't the real reason my client's identity was kept from your husband was because he was your lover? Or did a bizarre sexual fantasy get out of hand? Does the woman always tell the truth and does the man always have to be the liar? Judge Jill Jakes and Judge Lewis Welsh preside. Where the issues are real, the decisions are final. Superior Court. Good day, counsel. This is the case of State versus Finley. Will counsel please make their appearances and proceed with opening statements? Assistant District Attorney Janet Quinn for the prosecution. In this courtroom today, Your Honor, the state will prove that on October 5th, the defendant, Lester Finley, donned a stocking mask and broke into the home of Josephine Vernon. Once inside, he then attempted to rape her at knife point. Mrs. Vernon was able to identify her attacker, and later, after his arrest, Mr. Finley admitted to being the masked man in her bedroom. The prosecution asks that for these crimes of illegal entry, battery, and attempted rape, the defendant receive the maximum sentence of 15 years in state prison. Darrell Guillory for the defendant, Lester Finley. Of course my client admits that he had been in Josephine Vernon's bedroom. It isn't against the law to be in a woman's bedroom when you're there by her invitation. The screams that came from Mrs. Vernon that night were prompted not from a fear of my client, but from the fear that her husband would discover her in bed with another man. Lester Finley is a defendant today only because Mrs. Vernon is unwilling to risk the breakup of her marriage by admitting the truth, an ongoing love affair that she had with my client. Call your first witness, Ms. Quinn. The state calls Josephine Vernon to the stand. I can't believe Joyce would let me go to jail for 15 years just because she won't admit to her having an affair. Calm down. I'm here to help make sure that doesn't happen. Please be seated. Mrs. Vernon, calling your attention to last October 5th, can you tell me who was home with you around 11 o'clock that night? Just me and my daughters. My husband works the 3 to 11 shift at Beachwood Aircraft, and he wasn't at home yet. Now, did something unusual happen that night? I had been reading a book, and I fell asleep with the light on, and... Uh, I was awakened by a noise, and someone had put their hand over my mouth, and I couldn't breathe. And then I looked up, and I saw a man standing over me in a stocking mask. Did this person have a weapon? Yes. He had a big knife, you know, the kind that folds up. And he said that if I made a sound, he'd stab me. Upon hearing that, what did you do? Well, I shook my head to let him know I wasn't going to scream. And that's when he took his hand away from my mouth. What happened next? Well, he still had the knife in one hand. And then he unzipped his pants, and pulled them down, and then he reached for my ground. And then I panicked, and I don't, I don't know why I did this, but I, I reached up and I pulled the knot on the top of the mask, and I pulled it from his head. Your Honor, I have here what appears to be a mask made out of a woman's stocking. May it re be received into evidence as state's one? Yes, it will be so received. Mrs. Vernon, do you recognize this? Yes, it's the stocking I pulled from Les's head. So when you pulled this off your attacker's head, you were able to get a good look at his face? Yes, it was Les, Les Finley. Were you acquainted with Mr. Finley prior to the evening in question? We were from the same neighborhood, and we grew up together. Was Lester Finley ever your boyfriend or lover? Never. I never even went out with him. I mean, the only time I ever saw him was a couple of times at a parties, and, and then I tried to avoid him. Why? What happened at those parties? Uh, he'd usually be drinking, and he was always trying to kiss me and ask me out. You know, he's always trying to touch me and grab at me, and I, I just laugh, and I kid him about it. It's saying he should have asked me before I got married. And then I just walk away. I never knew he was sick enough to try raping me. Objection. This witness is stating a conclusion of law that you're here to determine, Your Honor. Sustain. Strike the reference to rape. Move on, Ms. Quinn. Please tell the court then what happened after you pulled this stocking mask off of Lester Finley's head. Well, I knew he wouldn't stab me, so I, I struggled with him, and I guess I must have cried out because my oldest little girl, Loretta, opened the bedroom door. When you saw Loretta, what did you do? Well, I yelled for her to run next door to the Kane's house to the neighbors and call the police. When she ran out, Lester let go of me and ran off. Thank you. No further questions. Your witness, Mr. Gillery. Mrs. Vernon, your daughter never went to your neighbor's house to call the police, did she? No. 
My husband stopped her at the front door. So your husband just happened to arrive home at the same time my client left? That's right. So then you told your husband what had happened and you immediately called the police? Not exactly. Well, when you say not exactly, what you really mean is the police weren't called until four hours later. Well, my husband and I wanted to, to talk about it before we did anything. Talk about what? They were a person you could identify, broke into your home, attempted to rape you, and you talk about it for four well, hours before calling the police? I, see, I didn't tell Noah at first that it was Lester because I was afraid that if he knew it was Lester, that he'd go after him, and I didn't want my husband to get in any trouble. Wasn't the real reason my client's identity was kept from your husband was because he was your lover? Uh, what kind of a lover? Cuts a screen to get in, carries a knife, and wears a mask. The same kind of lover who knows that Josie Vernon likes to play and rape fantasies. How can you say that? How can you... I have nothing further. You may step down, Mrs. Vernon. Who is on trial here, me or Les Finley? Look, we'll take care of that right away. Your Honor, my next witness is Loretta Vernon. Uh, Your Honor... The defense objects to the calling of this witness. She's only six years old and is not competent to testify. Uh, well, because of her age, I was intending to qualify this witness, Mr. Gallery, before your objection. I will do so. You sit down right there, Loretta, in the witness stand, and you and I will have a little talk, okay? All right. Loretta, how old are you, sweetie? Six. And what grade are you in in school? First grade. Do you go to Sunday school? Yes. Loretta, do you know the difference between telling the truth and telling a lie? Yes. What happens if you tell a lie? God punishes you. Well, I find this witness is competent to testify, Mr. Gillery. I was asleep in my room, but I woke up. And why did you wake up? Because I heard Mommy screaming, and I went to her room to see what was the matter. When you opened the door, what did you see, Loretta? A man was holding Mama down on the bed. Loretta, is this the man you saw with your mother? I don't know. It's all right, Loretta. At that time, did your mother say anything to you? She said to run to the kings and call the police. Thank you. No further questions? You may cross-examine, Mr. Gillery. Hi, Loretta. Hi. Loretta. Have you ever seen your father hold your mother down on the bed? I did one time. Now, when you saw this man hold your mommy down, was it the same way that your father did? No, it was different. How was it different? When I saw Daddy holding Mommy down, she wasn't screaming and he wasn't hitting her. in your life and you're looking for a way to get up and go well you can have a career and self-respect it's as easy as it can be there's only one thing that you need to know all you gotta do is call ptc call ptc today 953-4666 that's 953-4666 we asked the Harris family for their opinion of King's Dominion's Whitewater Canyon. The new Avalanche bobsled. Our new fantasy show. All the kids' rides. Even the shockwave. So come to King's Dominion soon, and you too will say... Get $3 off coupons from Giant Food. Good May 22nd through July 1st. In Washington, called AAA Lift. My name is M.G. Sloan, and I've been teaching adult education for 18 years. Uh, most of these people have been struggling most of their lives to learn how to cope with a society that is a reading society. Call 223-7587. Hmm, something's missing. Got 
Gotta get the Gouldens. Gotta get the Gouldens. Gotta get the Gouldens. Gotta get the... Uh-oh. Now, Gouldens mustard comes in safe plastic jars. Phew, what a break for kids. The next prosecution witness is Noah Vernon, well, the husband the of the alleged victim. I always get home just about 11.30 every night. And when you arrived home at that time last October 5th, did something unusual happen? Well, I guess you could call it unusual when you get home and your six-year-old is running out the front door screaming she's going to call the police because a man's upstairs hurting her mom. What did you do when Loretta said that to you? Well, I ran into the house, and the light was on in our bedroom. Uh, Josie was in there, alone, in a torn nightgown. What did you do then? Well, when she told me some guy with a knife had tried to rape her, I ran around, searched the house to make sure he was gone, and that's when I found that cut screen. May this screen be received into evidence as states too? Yes, it will be so received. Do you recognize the screen, Mr. Vernon? Yes, that's the screen from our breakfast room window, and it was not torn when I left for work. Thank you. Uh, would you please tell the court what you did after searching the house? Well, I made sure the guy had left, and then Josie and I put Loretta to bed. And then we talked for a while, and then later we called the police. Thank you, Mr. Vernon. No further questions. Mr. Geller, your witness. Mr. Vernon, when you say later you called the police, what you really mean is four hours later at 3.30 a.m., isn't that true? My wife was upset. I had to calm her down. But the four-hour delay in calling the police meant that it was harder for them to catch your wife's attacker, isn't that correct? No, that's not correct. The delay didn't make any difference. Josie knew it was Finley, and the police picked him right up. Oh, I don't recall you testifying that when... Uh, you arrived home, Josie told you it was Les Finley who had attacked her. Well, she did after she calmed down, and she told the police the same thing when they came. I see. You knew the defendant? I'd seen him around. Oh, what you really mean is you'd seen him around your wife. Look, this affair stuff is just a lot of bull. It's a smokescreen. If my wife had invited this guy over, which she didn't, he would have left a lot earlier. She knows what time I get off from work. What if they both fell asleep after a night of sex, Mr. Vernon? You. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. I'll withdraw the question. I wouldn't want this witness to speculate on how his wife ended up in bed with an old neighborhood friend. Officer Sanford, the prosecutor is now questioning private? Officer Melba Sanford. When the police department started their sexual assaults against women section, I was assigned there because it was thought that the victims would be more comfortable talking to another woman. Now, Officer, is it your experience that many times in cases of sexual assault, there is a delay in reporting the crime. That's true. Rape is a degrading and humiliating experience. And frequently, the victim needs some time to pull herself together. Now, after taking Mrs. Uh, Vernon's statement, was there anything about her appearance that indicated to you that, in fact, she had been abused? She had bruises on her face and arms. As a result of what you saw and heard, what did you do? I obtained a warrant, and I arrested a defendant at his home on the morning of October 6th. Your Honor, I have here a very large pocket knife. May it be received into evidence as States 3? Yes, it will be so received. Officer Sanford, have you seen this knife before? I removed it from the pocket of the defendant at the time of his arrest. Now, at the time of his arrest, was he given his Miranda rights? Yes, he was, and he waived them. He confessed to cutting the screen with that pocket knife. He also stated that he was wearing a stocking mask and did enter the Vernon bedroom. Thank you, Officer. No further questions, Your Honor. You may inquire, Mr. Gillery. Officer Sanford, let's let the court hear the rest of my client's confession. Didn't he confess that everything he did was with Mrs. Vernon's consent? That's right. And didn't he also confess that they were having an affair and that she enjoyed the fantasy of being assaulted? Yes, he did. Well, what did you do to check out my client's story as to his ongoing relationship with Mrs. Vernon? I didn't do anything. That's right. You did nothing because as a member of the sexual assault team, you are prejudiced in favor of alleged rape victims. That's not the reason. Why don't you ask me which one of their stories I believe to be credible? If I ask you a question like that, a bolt of lightning would come through the roof and they'd send me right back to law school. In home accidents last year, over 3 million people were disabled. 100,000 either suffered permanent disabilities or died. There is no second chance when help arrives too late. Should you ever suffer a bad fall or other emergency, prompt help can be as close as a tiny radio transmitter you wear around your neck or on your belt. When you're alone and can't get to the phone, it takes just a press of this button and seconds to alert the Life Call 24-hour manned monitoring center. Help is promptly on the way. There is no second chance when help arrives too late.
the Life Call Medical Alert System can now be leased and is affordable to anyone. Get a free booklet and the vital facts on the Life Call Push Button Life Saving System. Call 1 800 554 3000 for your free booklet. The call is free. 1 800 554 3000. That's 1 800 554 3000. Well, my TV's playing reruns. They got no more to show me. Sometimes I wonder what I'm going to do. Because there ain't no cure for the summertime blues. The Disney Channel has the cure for the summertime blues with nonstop entertainment for kids, the whole family, and for you. It's like getting three channels in one. So call now. Disney Channel has a cure for the summertime blues. Call today for a special summer offer on the Disney Channel. Who says you need a college degree for a successful business career? At WSS, we'll train you on the latest IBM and Wang equipment. You'll learn word processing, data entry, computerized bookkeeping, and executive secretarial skills. We can even help you with financial aid if you qualify. And our convenient morning, afternoon, and evening classes begin every month. So start your business career today. Call 457-1818, the Washington School for Secretaries. After the prosecution rested its case, defense attorney Daryl Guillory presented several character witnesses for Les Fenley. He is now questioning the defendant. You're two years older than I am, so even though we went to school together, we were never actually in the same grade. But I guess I've known Josie for 10 or 12 years. What was her reputation in high school? Oh, Objection, your honor. Her reputation is irrelevant to any of the charges in this case. Sustained. You know better than to ask that kind of question, Mr. Guillory. May we approach the bench, Your Honor? You may. Your Honor, since our defense is one of consent, I don't want to be precluded by your ruling from asking questions about prior sexual relations between uh, Mrs. Vernon and my client. I'm going to ask that Your Honor stand by your previous ruling, that any questions in this area are irrelevant. Well, Ms. Quinn, my ruling was not quite that broad. I sustained the objection as to a question of reputation only. If Mr. Finley's defense is that the rape charge is a cover-up for a love affair, then he's entitled to produce supporting evidence if he can. So you may proceed, Mr. Gilly. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Finley, were you and Josie Vernon together on the last 4th of July? Uh, yes, we were. A group of the old neighborhood gang got together and had a picnic at Walnut Tree Park. Mm -hmm. Josie's husband either got drunk or bored or a little of both, I don't know, but he left. And Josie stayed around, and we started talking. She started to come on to me. Well, we ended up making it in some bushes behind the old ranger station. And, well, I was real excited and got a little too rough because I tore her panties, but, but I apologized later. And when you told her you were sorry, what did she say? Well, she said, don't apologize, baby. I like it that way. And did you continue to see her? And nearly every week. I'd go over there after she'd put her daughter to bed, and then I'd leave before her husband knows. You're a home. damn liar, Lester. Good. You, you have to get control of your anger, ma'am. You've had your opportunity to testify <clears throat> now. No more outbursts. You may continue, Mr. Guillory. Thank you. Did the rough sex continue? Uh, yes, it did, but with a new twist. See, Josie liked to fantasize. Uh, she'd see sex scenes in a movie, and then she'd tell me about them, and, and the two of us would act them out. You know? That's why I was wearing the stocking mask that night. Explain that to the court. Well, uh, Josie told me about a movie she saw called Return of the Ripper. It was about a young man who wears a stocking mask and rapes women at knife point. So you decided to act out a scene from the movie? Yes, but I didn't tell Josie. My, my sister Penny gave me a stocking mask, and I went over the house and cut the screen to get in. And, well, as soon as Josie saw me, she knew exactly what was going on. And, Let's just say she could have won an Academy Award for a performance. Now, why didn't you leave before 11.30 p.m.? Well, we fell asleep. I woke to the sound of a car coming up the driveway and Josie screaming, oh, my God, my, my husband Noah's home. And well, all the noise we made getting dressed, I guess, got her daughter running in the room. And, well, I, I split, and you know the rest. Thank you, Mr. Finley. No further questions. Your witness, Ms. Quinn. Mr. Uh, Ripper? Surely you didn't want Noah Vernon finding out about this affair you were having with his wife? No, of course I didn't. Then uh, didn't you think he might find it unusual that the window screen had been cut? Why, a burglar could have done it. Besides, I wasn't really thinking with my head, if you understand what I mean, Ms. Attorney. No, I don't, but here is something that maybe we both will understand. Now, this was taken by the police when Josie Vernon went to the station. 
Could you tell us how she got the bruise on her cheek and the cut on her lip? Well, she... No, wait. Don't tell me. Were you acting out a scene from Rocky? Attorney Daryl Guillory's final witness is Penny Finley, the sister of the defendant. I was at that picnic, and when Noah left, Josie and Les got together and then disappeared. Were you surprised? Oh, not at all. I mean, everybody knows that Josie's a neighborhood tramp. Ask that that answer be stricken as, as... Non-responsive. The Thank answer you. is stricken. The objection is sustained. Did you ever talk to your brother about his relationship with Josie? Yeah, I told him to dump her, but he said it was a matter of economics. Economics? Well, he said he didn't have a lot of money, and with Josie, he didn't have to buy her dinner or rent a motel room. I see. Well, just one more thing. Uh, bef the day before your brother was uh, arrested, did he ask you for a stocking? Yes, he did, and I gave him one with a run in it, and when I asked him why he needed it, he said it was going to help his acting career, and then he laughed. <laughs> Thank you. No further questions. Ms. Quinn. Ms. Finley, you were present at the time Officer Sanford arrested your brother on attempted rape, were you not? Yes, I was. Then why didn't you tell her at that time that your brother didn't need to rape Mrs. Vernon? They were already having this great sexual relationship. I tried to, but she took him away real quick. Now, Les is your only brother, isn't he? Yes. And you know if he's convicted, he's going to go away for a very long time. I know that then uh, you'd be willing to do just about anything, even lie, to keep your family from being broken up. Well, why don't you ask Josie Vernon the same question about her family? That's all the questions I have. You may step down, Miss Henley. The defense rests. Then I'll hear closing arguments. Your Honor, there is no question of identity in this case. <laughs> it's agreed on. The only question is force or consent. Now, can you honestly believe that true love consists of a knife, a mask, and a screaming, punched-out woman? Now, I think that's asking too much, even for those fantastic films that the defendant is so fond of reenacting. No, this self-proclaimed Les the Ripper is actually Les the Rapist and is guilty as charged. <clears throat> is a man always guilty in a rape case? Does the woman always tell the truth, and does the man always have to be the liar? Well, if so, then we don't need trials. All we need is the uh, victim's testimony in the prison bus. If the prosecutor were the defense attorney in this case, she would also be questioning the four-hour lapse of time before Mrs. Vernon called the police. She would also be questioning Mrs. Vernon's past flirtations, and she'd be relying on Penny Finley's testimony since it supports her brother's story. My client has been falsely charged and should be found not guilty. All right, thank you, counsel. We'll stand in recess while I consider my notes, the testimony, and the judgment. Thank you. Mommy, it hurts! MediQuick is the quickest way I know to treat minor cuts, scrapes, and scratches. MediQuick protects against infection and helps heal the hurt. And for extra protection, MediQuick antibiotic ointment. Someone has done something new for minor arthritis pain and its stiffness with more medicine than regular Bengay. Introducing new extra strength arthritis formula from mentholatum deep heating. Look for a job lately? Employers wanting experience only? Maybe it's time you look into a career as a medical assistant at the National Education Center. This phone number is a good place to start. What are you waiting for? Stop drifting. Call for a brochure on careers in the medical field. Call 1-800-722-7337. 1-800-722-7337. We're in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Pat Maloney, busily remodeling their kitchen the cabinet pack way. Why did Mr. Maloney choose cabinet pack? Because we showed him how, with the cabinet pack method, he could save up to 50% the cost of custom-built cabinets. Mrs. Maloney likes the speed and convenience of cabinet pack. She doesn't even have to remove her dishes. Gail, what do you like best about your new kitchen? Well, I like how well I can keep it clean looking. Pat? The price. Call 587-6100. The majority of people in our gallery think that Lester Fenley is not guilty of attempted rape. Judge Jake's rules in one minute. I love tortilla chips, but they can be a little chilly. But now there's new Sacheros. 
Hoops and churros, light and crispy, cause they're made by Pequeños Quibleros. The Keebler Elves introduce Sancheros, authentic stone ground corn tortilla chips, made extra thin, light and crispy. Original, nacho, salsa. Sancheros. Sancheros, light and crispy, cause, cause they're, they're made, made by Pequeños Quibleros. Your daughter's wedding. At last. And you've got dirty dentures. I just soak them. And soaking's not enough. Brushing with Dentu Cream Denture Toothpaste cleans almost twice as clean. Twice as clean. Brush with Dentu Cream or Dentu Gel. Stone Age dogs got a meaty teeth cleaning bone every day. But over time, bones lost the meat. Not meaty bone dog biscuits. They're baked with real beef for a better tasting bone. Meaty bone brings meat back to the bone. Will the defendant please rise? Mr. Guillory suggests in his closing argument that men always have the deck stacked against them in a court of law when a rape charge is being prosecuted. I find this to be a clever reversal of the reality so long prevalent in our judicial system and our society of the female victim herself being made to feel that she is the defendant in a rape prosecution. It's only recently that some balance has been established in rape trials by reform of the relevant law in the legislature and the case law. Now, turning to the assessment of the evidence in this case, like so many that come before the court, it is purely a question of the credibility of the witnesses. The defendant's defense is that he was merely acting out sexual fantasies to which the victim consented. Well, I am impressed by the testimony of the victim's daughter, who said that she saw the assailant hitting her mother and heard her mother crying, and that her mother sent her next door to call the police. I am further impressed by the testimony of the victim herself. But most impressive of all to me is the photographs of the victim, which show her to be the victim of brutality by the defendant. I am not in any way impressed by the testimony of the defendant. I think perhaps he is acting out some fantasies of his own. And in any event, I find him guilty of all three crimes as charged. The court is now adjourned. At the time of sentencing, Judge Jakes sent the defendant to state prison for 10 years. Josie and Noah Vernon moved away from the neighborhood because of the constant harassment of Penny Fenley, her family, and friends. Tomorrow on Superior Court. Crime of burglary is not punishable by death. When his rattlesnakes kill a burglar. I thought the robbers would believe the sign. Was it a last resort? The last two years I've been hit 16 times. Or was it manslaughter? Vardis Fisher took the law into his own hands. And Frank Sterling died as a result. Of the issues are real. The decision's final. Superior Court. Superior Court is a Ralph Edwards Stew Billet production in association with Laura Mar. Two days ago, my husband was in a bad car accident, and it wasn't his fault. Doctors say he'll be in the hospital for three weeks, and I'll work for 12 more. Now tell me, what are we supposed to do with the hospital bills, lost pay, and total cost? I ask you, who's going to pay for all this? Call the law offices of Greenberg and Betterman at 589-2200. The first consultation is free. Call Greenberg and Betterman at 589-2200. They'll make sure you get everything you're entitled to under the law. Stop. You're about to witness the most incredible TV rental offer ever available. Stop. Choice TV Rental is now offering 25-inch color console TVs, cable-ready with remote control, for only $49.95 a month. Stop. You heard it right. 25-inch console TVs, brand names, all styles for only $49.95 a month. No one will beat this price. Stop. Call Choice TV now. This offer will not last long. So you're tired of sitting around waiting for something to happen in your life. And you're looking for a way to get up and go. Well, you can have a career and self-respect. It's as easy as it can be. There's only one thing that you need to know. All you gotta do is...
Call PTC today, 953-4949. That's 953-4949.